<laughs> I'm afraid there's been a terrible misunderstanding. The Imperial family is simply under our loving protection. They certainly haven't been imprisoned. But that does bring me to exactly why I want you to help us. It does? The Azure Knight is already on our side. But if we had your Ashen Knight as well, that would mean we'd have two of the great knights of Erebonian legend to put into play. Couple them with our Panzer Soldats, and the Imperial Army's armored divisions would cower before us. You may not find us winning the war ideal, but this union benefits everyone more than carrying on until our inevitable victory, hmm? I don't think it's that simple. I beg to differ. The presence of Soldot's units on a battlefield makes a tremendous difference. What they may lack in firepower and armor compared to tanks, they make up for in mobility and versatility. But more important than even those factors is the psychological impact they have on our opponents. Well... They're only human. As such, we are as captivated as we are terrified of giant beings bearing human form. And if that holds true even for mass-produced soldats made with modern technology, it will be all the more true for the divine knights of legend you and Crow possess. Can't argue with that logic. <sighs> I will say it once more. Gilead Osborne is dead. And with his death, all that's left to be done is end this ridiculous war and return order to the Empire. Only then will everything be as it should. That includes both your pleasant academy life and the peaceful days of darling Elise and her friend the Princess. <gasps> Are you trying to? Whatever you ultimately decide, their safety is guaranteed. I would ask that you promise him this, if nothing else, Your Grace. <laughs> but of course, I'm not a monster. Rufus. We may stand on opposite sides of this conflict, but I still sit on Thor's board of directors. And in that capacity, I suggest you consider carefully the choice before you. After all, every soldier must decide for himself whether a cause is worth fighting, perhaps even dying for. I look forward to hearing your answer. All that's left to be done is end this ridiculous war and return order to the Empire. Only then will everything be as it should. That includes both your pleasant academy life and the peaceful days of darling Elise and her friend the Princess. I suggest you consider carefully the choice before you. After all, every soldier must decide for himself whether a cause is worth fighting perhaps even dying for. I look forward to hearing your answer.
Keep racking your brain like that and smoke will start coming out of your ears. Hey now, no need to give me that look. I figured I was gonna find you busy thinking everything over like your life depended on it. And what do you know? I was right. <laughs> it's tough being popular. If you joined us, I could get away with doing half the work I am now. So come on, stop freaking out about it so much and make a choice. Grub, of course. Kinda early, but I brought you your lunch. Mind if I join you? Oh, that kind of food more your thing? Okay then, give me a minute while I go ask the chef to whip something up. Cool, all right, dig in. Yeah, they're called fish burgers. Pretty good, right? Well, glad to hear. Guess it was worth putting my cooking skills to the test after all. It was my first time cooking in a while, too. Sharon could probably do better, though. But I wanted to give it a shot anyway. This stuff was like soul food back in Dry, where I grew up. To think, all the time we spent searching for the leader of the Imperial Liberation Front, and he was right under our noses. Crow Armbrust, from the Jirai SEZ. Oh, yeah, Vita was using some weird thing of hers to let you see what was going on, wasn't she? So I guess you saw what happened there. Yeah, by pure coincidence. It's changed a lot since I was last there, so it was kind of surreal being back again. But it was nostalgic in its own way, too. Where's the fun in prying into a guy's past? Save all that talk for your number one in class. Who's the lucky girl anyway? Elisa? Laura? Emma? Fee? And don't tell me it's Millium, because, you know, it... You're really serious. My past really isn't that big of a deal, you know. It's got nothing on yours, that's for sure. If you find yourself thinking that's all when I'm done, well, I warned you. So, you really want to know? <sighs> all right, you win. Like I said, it's just your run-of-the-mill sob story. Pick up any history textbook and you'll probably find a dozen others just like it. It's the kind of story that's so common no one bothers to remember it. Like it never even happened. Back in those days, Jirai was known as Jirai City. It was a city-state off the coast of northwest Zemuria that prospered through maritime trade with West Erevonia, North Ambria, and Remiferia. It had a population of around 150,000 people, so it wasn't exactly a big place or anything. Because of that, the surrounding nations left it alone and let us live out our days in peace. We were pretty fortunate, all things considered until about 20 years ago. That was when the North Ambrian disaster struck, and much of the Principality of North Ambria was turned to salt. And as a result, trade on the Northwest Shore was reduced to virtually nothing. 
day after day, Jirai's prosperity started to fade away. Still, it wasn't all bad. We had our fishing, our historic landmarks, our septia mines. We could make use of those to get trade going again, both to keep our state running and to help out North Ambria. In fact, the one who advocated that approach was the mayor, my grandfather. He was the last mayor Jirai City ever had. <laughs> he was a stubborn old bastard, but he had this wry sense of humor and was well loved by everyone. I lost my mom and dad early, so he was also my only living relative. <laughs> he taught me just about everything a guy could know. He was like a mom, dad, and your old master rolled into one, I guess. Anyway, fast forward to 10 years ago. Out of nowhere, we received this proposal from the Erebonian government. They said they wanted to extend a railway line from Heimdall all the way to Jirai. We relied on the sea for trade before, but there wasn't any reason to believe we couldn't benefit from being connected to Heimdall by rail. The proposal drew overwhelming support from the city's council, and as a result, my grandfather was forced to accept. Within a year, the city had all of its old life back and then some. The streets were more bustling than ever. But keep in mind, this was a result of huge amounts of imperial capital flowing into the city. Land and buildings we once treasured were bought up left and right. Everything became a target for investment. People only cared about making money. Something similar supposedly happened in Crossbell too, but unlike there, no opposition existed in Jirai. My grandfather sensed something was off, and he tried what he could to get the situation under control. Then one day, someone blew up the railway line leading to Jirai. Everyone demanded that it be repaired as quickly as possible. Everyone except the imperial government. Instead, they panned our national security arrangements for being insufficient and threatened to withdraw all imperial capital. The city was left in an uproar like we'd never seen. Shares plummeted, and with no one able to ascertain the culprit's identity, chaos reigned. That was when he showed up. Chancellor Gilliath Osborne, in his third year as representative of the Imperial government, personally came to Jirai. We then received a second proposal. The restoration of the railway and its future security will be seen to by the Imperial Army. In return for our continued assistance and safekeeping, Jirai will come under the wing of our glorious empire and attain even greater prosperity as a special economic zone. The timing was too good to be true, really. Realizing this, my grandfather staunchly opposed the idea. He tried everything he could to convince the city's council to reject the offer. Unfortunately, once you taste the sweet fruit of prosperity, it's hard to want to go back. The council, made up of influential merchants and all their greed, jumped at the offer. And tempted by the elimination of customs, together with the tax breaks from being an SEZ, many of the citizens did too. And during all that, they'd conveniently found a